the word of God, that's what you're storing up in your heart. That's what you're building up in your heart. And when life squeezes and it's going to squeeze, life is going to, listen, let's just get this in your mind, settle this right now. Life is going to squeeze you. If it ain't squeezing you right now, just wait a little while. Amen. Life is going to squeeze you. It's going to squeeze you whether you're white or black, rich or poor, educated or uneducated. Life is going to squeeze you. So since you know that life is going to squeeze, then you need to make up your mind to make sure that I have invested on the inside of me the right stuff to bring me through the squeeze. Because you're going to get squeezed. Pressure will come. Trials are going to come. Hardship are going to come. You are going to be tested. I don't care who you are. I don't care how rich you are, poor you are, educated, uneducated. Life is going to bump you. Life is going to bruise you. Life is going to come at you full speed. So you might as well invest in yourself what you need to out, uh, o overcome or outlast the test. Because the test is going to come. It's going to come to the best of us. Gonna to come to the best of you. Whether you read your Bible or don't read your Bible, trouble gonna come. Whether you come to church or don't come to church, trouble is gonna come. Whether you put money in the offering plate or not, trouble is gonna come. But when I come to church, I'm investing. I'm loading my heart up. I'm giving what is necessary to bring me through the storm. And so when the storm comes, I don't have to panic. I don't have to freak out because I have done what was necessary. I have invested what was necessary to bring me through this situation. The Bible says, one, number one, your treasure is in your heart. Number two, your treasure is based on what you are feeding or what you are loading in your heart, what you are spending time in. That's what's going to come out of you. Whatever you whatever you put your time and energy in, that's what's going to come out of you. If you are not vet, uh, investing in the things of God, then when trouble comes, you won't have within you the things of God to pull out of you. All right. Trouble going to come. All right, let me take you somewhere else. Talking about the heart, we're talking about faith, and we're talking about the language of faith. Faith speaks. Faith speaks. All right, let's go to um, Hebrews 13 and 16. I mean, Hebrews 13 and 6. I can tell where your heart is by listening to you. All you got to do is listen to somebody. Just let them talk. And they'll tell you where they're at. Just let them, just, just listen for a while and you will find the location of a, of a person's spirit mm -hmm. by just letting them talk. Because out of the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah. So all you got to do is just listen for a while and you'll be able to locate where a person is. You'll be able to locate whether a person is serious, or whether a person is playing games, whether a person is um, a person of faith, a person of unbelief, whether they're serious about their life or serious about their faith. Or, you, you, you'll be able to um, figure a whole lot of stuff out about a person if you just sit there and listen to them. Just sit there and listen to the couple, what they have to say, what they're talking about. What, what, what are they talking about? Not just that they're talking, but what's the topic of their conversation? The topic of a person's conversation tells you a whole lot about a person. Yes, sir. Because fools like to talk about fools. Yes. <laughs> Come on, can we be real? Yes, sir. Not just the conversation, but the topic. What, what are you talking about? When somebody calls you on the phone and start talking, question, ask yourself, what are they saying to me? What's the point? What's the topic of this conversation? That'll let you know whether or not you need to keep talking to the person. Because you're only going to bring out of you what's in you. So if garbage on the, is on the inside, then that's what's going to come spewing out the mouth. But if you got some good stuff on the inside of you, then that's what's going to come out of your mouth. It all depends on what's on the inside. So all you got to do is sit there and listen. And the person will reveal themselves through their conversation. All right, I told you to go to Hebrews, Hebrews, the 13th chapter. What did I say? Verse 6. All right, here we go. 
Talking about faith, divorce of faith. Let's start at verse number five. Hebrews 6 and 5. I'm sorry. Hebrews 13 chapter, verse number 5. All right. Let your conversation, let your, your conversation be without contentions. Excuse me, I'm sorry, covetance. And be content with such things as ye have. For he has said that he represents God. For he has said, God has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. This is what the Lord has said. God has said, I will never leave you nor will I ever forsake you. Now listen to this, verse number six. This is the key. So that we may boldly say. Yes. Now, verse number five tells us what God says. God said to Corey, I will never leave you, Corey, yes. nor will I ever forsake you. Yes. Now, verse number six says there's a reason why God said that to me. There's a reason why. There's a purpose in God telling you something. He didn't just say it for no reason. He says, I said this to you for this reason. Verse number six says, so that you or me, we may boldly say. Yes. So God said something so that you and I may say something. And not just say it, but boldly say it. Say it with confidence. All right. Say it without fear. Yes. Say it without hesitation. Yes. Say it with assurance. Say it understanding that whatever God has said is going to come to pass. So God is saying to me, Corey, I will never leave you nor will I ever forsake you. Why did he say it? So that I may repeat after him and say, the Lord is my help. Yes. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So God has said something in his word so that we may read what he has said and then have a response to what he said. Yes. My response, we're talking about faith now. My response to what God has said is to say what he said. Yes. And to say it with boldness. Yes. To say it without hesitation. To say it without fear. To say it without contradiction. To say it without worrying about whether or not it's going to come to pass. God said, Corey, I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you, regardless of what I find myself going through. And sometimes the storms are hard. Yeah. All right. Sometimes it's rough. But God said, no matter what you find yourself going through, son, this must be your confession. Yes. The Lord is my help. The Lord is my help. And I will not, this is the decision that I am making, I will not fear, I will not be afraid of what men can do. Okay. I, this is this is my response to the word of God. Remember, we talked about how faith faith is a um, it's an action. Faith is an action word. Faith the word faith is an action. It's a verb. It's not a noun. It's an action. Faith in order to have faith, it's an action. It's something that you're doing that shows or reveals your belief. I'm gonna say that again. Faith is an action. Faith is something that you are doing that shows what you believe. I believe, I believe that heaven and hell is real. I believe that one day Jesus is coming back. And because I believe that, I'm going to live right. That's right. My response to my belief that one day I'm going to have to stand before a holy God is to live a righteous life. That's my response. Because I believe that heaven and hell is a real place. Now, some people don't believe that. Some people don't believe in heaven. Some people don't believe in hell. Some people say heaven and hell is just a part of your mind. Hell is a part of your mind. Now, I've heard all kinds of explanations of what hell is. But I believe, based on the word of God, I believe that hell is a literal place. It is a place that exists. It is a place that burns with fire and brimstone. I believe that hell is a place of torment. I believe that one day we all, no matter who you are, we all will stand before God and give an account for our life. And because I believe this, I'm living my life in a way so that when I stand before God, I will be found acceptable. Yes. My lifestyle is based on what I believe. Yes. My lifestyle is the evidence of my belief. It is a life of faith. I believe this, so I live like this. If you say you believe but won't live, then you don't really believe. All right. Because faith is the action of 
belief. Let me give you another example. <clears throat> if somebody yells out that the building is on fire and you stay sitting there, you don't believe that the building is on fire. You don't believe that. Because if you believe that it's on fire, then you, me, all of us going to get up and we're going to run out of here. The evidence of our belief, the evidence of our belief is that we move in agreement with what we believe. Mm -hmm. If you go to the doctor, I'll give you another example. I'm going to make this real simple. If you go to the doctor and the doctor says, listen, you got high blood pressure. You need to stop eating pork or whatever. And you leave the doctor's office and keep eating pork or eating whatever, eating whatever the doctor told not to eat. You don't believe what the doctor say. You don't believe it. You don't believe what the doctor say. Because had you believed what the doctor said, you would have responded to what they told you to do. There would have been the evidence of your belief. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Faith with no evidence. If you say you believe, but there, are no, there is no evidence of your belief. The Bible says belief without works cannot save you. You can't just leave the doctor's office saying, I believe that word he said, but then don't make no changes. Right. Belief without works or without evidence is void of power. It cannot save you. It cannot help you. Faith is the action of belief. I believe and I did this because of my belief. That's what the Bible calls faith. God spoke to Abraham said, Abraham, follow me and I will show you a land. Abraham got up and left. That was faith. He didn't just sit there and believe. No. He got up and he left. That was action connected to what he believed. And God said, that's faith. Without actions that's connected to your belief, then you don't have faith yet. There must always be an action. That's why your confession, that's why your mouth, what you say out of your mouth is very important. Because when you believe the word of God, then you begin to declare, you begin to speak the word of God. You begin to say what God said. You begin to say what he said. So when God says, Corey, by my stripes you are healed, when I believe the word of God, then I start to talk like God. I am healed. Why? Because God said, by his stripes I am healed. And so because I believe that I'm healed, I start to say I am healed. Why? Because that's how faith operates. That's how faith operates. Let me show it to you in the scripture here. Uh, Let's go to um, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 13. Talking about faith speaks. You got to have a language of faith. You got to stop talking crazy. You got to put your mouth on the payroll. Y'all ever heard me say that? Make your mouth work for you. Stop saying crazy stuff out of your mouth. Stop talking foolish out of your mouth. Now listen, I'm not talking to you if you're not saved because what I'm saying what I'm saying right now don't apply to you if you're not saved. But if you are a child of God, then you need to bring your language in line with the word of God. If you are a Christian, then you need to talk you need to talk like a Christian. And there's a way that we talk. We don't talk on um, defeat. We don't talk um, failure. We don't talk depression. We don't talk poverty. We change our language to come in line with the word of God. We change our language. We believe the word of God. I believe that God has supplied all of my needs. And so when I find myself in a situation where I have a need that needs to be supplied, I say what God say. Father, I thank you that you have supplied my need. Because you said you supplied my need. And I believe that you have supplied my need. I talk like my daddy. We talk like our father. We, we adopt his language as our language. So instead of talking about how bad life is and how rough trials are and how bad your situation is, you got to change your language. Faith has the language. We talk based on the word of God. We speak what the word says. 
I'm an overcomer. It doesn't matter what I face, I'm an overcomer. It's just who I am. It's just who you are. I'm not saying that because I'm special. I'm trying to get you to see yourself through the word of God. Everything I'm giving you is from the Bible. God says you're overcomer. I'm not making this up. The Bible says you are an overcomer. That's right. You believe God lying to you? Do you believe when God says you are more than a conqueror that he's, he's lying to you, that he's playing, he's trying to fool you, trying to trick you? No, he's telling you who you are. The father, it's, 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 just a, it's just like a father talking to his son and the father tells his son, this is who you are. This is what you can do. How do I know? Because I'm your daddy. I know who you are. I know what your bloodline is. I know what's in you. That's how I know you can make it. That's how God talks to us. God talks to us like his children. He don't say, he, he says, listen, I know you can make it. I know you can make it. How do you know I can make it? Because you're my child. You're my son. I know what's in you. How do you know what's in me? Because I'm the one who put it like you. I put it in you. You're a chip off the old block. The apple don't fall far from the tree. These are all little statements statements we, we make, you know. You're just like your daddy. Well, if God is my daddy, if God, if the Lord is my father, then, then what kind of man, what kind of person am I? Am I am I am I a loser? Am I defeated? Am I weak? When if God is my father, am I less than if God is if God truly is my father, then am I a weakling? What happened to me? No, you are more than a conqueror. You are a champion. You are the head and never the tail. But if you don't believe that, then it can't help you. See, you got to put this in you. You, you. you have to take the time to download this type of teaching in your spirit. You have to feed your spirit with this type of stuff so that when you find yourself going through, you can pull this out of you. But if you ain't put nothing in, then you ain't got nothing to pull out of you. And all you can do is cry and give in to the situation because you have not invested what you need to make it through the situation. What did I tell y'all? Is that Corinthians? All right, 113. You have to go ahead and read somebody. We have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. All right. This is the spirit of faith. This is what we have. This is who we are. I believe, and therefore I speak. I don't speak what I see. I don't speak what I feel. I speak what I believe. Listen to this. My words are the action of my belief. My words are the manifestation of what I believe. My language becomes my faith because I believe this and then I say out of my mouth what I believe and the Bible calls that faith. When you confess what you believe, the Bible calls that faith. You declare what you believe. You say what you, now see, my belief, now this is the difference between what I'm teaching you and my science. I'm not teaching you to confess something to make yourself strong or make yourself better. No. I'm teaching you to say what the word says. See, my science, they make up what they want to be. They make up who they are. They make up what they're going to say. That's not what I'm teaching you. What I'm teaching you is to say what he said. If he says you're healed, then you say, I'm healed. 